What up my dogs? Here today to make a video about testing the purity of oxygen concentrators. Here my tester model, Carrie Strope, is to, going to show us this high volume oxygen testing device. And I really like this a lot. Uh, if you've seen the previous video about these, I used an analox meter, which is really nice, but it needs a replacement sensor every year or two. And this uses some kind of ultrasonic uh, measuring device that does not require replacement sensors. This is kind of a one-time purchase uh, thing. Uh, man, they're really easy. It's click that button and it, it clicks on and does its thing. Uh, we're going to go ahead and show you guys how it works. So let me uh, zoom out here. And yeah, we'll, these are the same concentrators actually. Um, they're pretty much backup status at this point because they're many years old, but they're still capable of doing, you know, 94% uh, purity, which is great. So we're going to go ahead and click these on and uh, Carrie will show you guys how to, how to, you know, it's, it's really simple. It's just a bit of oxygen hose with a B fitting on it. And then this guy has, you know, the a barbed connection that just, you know, you can slide it right on and compression fit. So there's an inlet and an outlet. I understand these guys are, are totally comfortable with like 20 PSI coming off of like a jacked up con. Is that right? Yeah, they're, <clears throat> they're calibrated for concentrators, um, but typically I tell people 10, uh, 10 PSI, 10 LPM, try and stay around there, but, you know, some people have 20 PSI, so that's, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know. And then, um, while this one's coming up, we'll, 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 I'll show you guys some things that you need to keep maintained on these to ensure that you have really good purity. And if you're not getting good purity, these are the things you need to check first. So, um, yeah, Carrie's just screwing this thing on to the to your, your B fitting or whatever. And then, as you saw, I would just hit that button to turn it on. Yeah, see, push it on there. And then we'll turn this guy on. And it is, uh, it's set for, would you please set it to 7 LPM? I think it pops up a little bit. Yeah, just give it a second. See, it's set to right about 7. That's where it's supposed to be, but I wanted to just make sure before we start. And that's just about right. And yeah, so this thing is in real time. It, it'll check for 60 seconds and then cut itself off. So it's just starting out. So it's clearing out the old air and the beds and everything. And, you know, in theory, we should see this. It should be going up. There it goes. And yeah, now we'll just put that down for a moment. And Carrie, if you would just turn this other machine and we'll show you guys really simple stuff. This is your filter on the side. Really important to keep that clean. Yeah, they're usually just held in with a couple of straps and then you can pull that out. And yeah, this guy's, you know, yeah, you can give it a quick, uh, you know, beat it out or whatever. Um, at a certain point though, those things, you know, they, they'll just cake up and so, um, and then there's another filter in the back that it's important to keep an eye on and they've all got a version of this. Some of them might be different. Some of them might be more rectangular and yeah, it's hard to see in there, but there is a, uh, go ahead and pull that out, Carrie. Just yeah. Just give it a twist, twist. and yeah, and twist and pull that up. And that's, what's going to be in there. Something like this depends on the model you have, but yeah, that's the filter. And then it's got that piece that goes on top and then it just slides right in. Let's see if we can get a look in there. Not very well, but that's okay. It's just, it's dark. There's just a hole in there. Essentially it's a cavity, a deep dark hole. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that you just push that bad boy back in there and then slide that guy on top. And sometimes those will come loose if you don't push it in. So you want to give it a push and like a twist as you put it back in. And, and they, they'll stick together really tight. Um, and yeah, you can close that on up. And then let's see where this, this machine is at. These concentrators take a minute to come up to speed. It's why it's nice to have a system with a delay on it. Whether you build it yourself or get it from the commercial companies out there. And yeah, so let's click this guy back on and you can just leave it. It's, you know, it's meant for it to be able to pass air through its inlet and out the outlet. And we're already up to 92%. So that's a great sign. And we should in theory see this hit 94. These, um, 
you know, they don't have like the decimal point. My old meter had a, a decimal place reading on it. And, you know, that's nice to see the exact, like a little bit of granular detail, you know, because in 95 is kind of a dream for these. But if this thing, I think if it's like 90, you know, 4.9 or whatever it'll be, it's not going to want to tell you that. But yeah, the, and these also, by the way, are machines that I've returned to 5 PSI. Um, they're met, they, I bought them at 15, and then what I discovered is that they just don't do good purity at that. And that's another thing you can determine. You know, if you've got a concentrator, it's really nice to know if you're hanging out in the 90s or if you're hanging out in, you know, the 80s. Like, and that's a huge difference. You're, every percentage that you lose on that purity I'll go ahead and start it up again every percentage that you lose on that purity is like it's a certain amount of degrees that are going to be missing from the the flame on the torch now we're talking about 93 and yeah in a little while I think it'll hit even 94 and you know these are a little bit older machines, um, but I think this is pretty typical. They, they just take a minute or two or three uh, to get up to purity. And there we have it, 94%. Thanks to my testing model. Appreciate you guys.